so hello everyone uh, thanks for joining me on this track number one uh, i'm Alek tarasenko and today i'm going to speak about web scrapping with elixir and crowley so let's get started first of all let me introduce myself uh, i'm Alek. Um, i um, was born in ukraine uh, currently i'm working in the swedish office of erlang solutions i'm engaged with erlang for maybe five years already and Almost the same time, I'm working with Elixir as well. And originally I came from the Python community, so I have lots of insights from that land. Uh, so let's get back to the original topic of this conversation. Uh, what is web scrapping and what we are going to talk about? I think that it's useful to synchronize to have the same understanding of the same terms. Um, and there are multiple definitions of, of scrapping, so we just need to pick one of them. And I like defining scrapping as a way for you to convert uh, the uh, internet to your own database for the uh, future usage. Uh, yeah, so as soon as we have made this definition, so we understand what we are talking about and we are on the same page, uh, let's move forward and uh, let's discuss who uses web scrapping and one, uh, why one may be interested in the data. So I have this uh, little game. I would suggest you to guess who are the largest uh, companies who are using the web scrapping. Uh, well, as I understand, you are muted, so probably I will have to answer this question myself, unfortunately. And well, the biggest users are Google, uh, Bing, and Yahoo, so search engines. Uh, search engines are using web scrapping in order to build um, large indexes of the data so you are performing requests, uh, search requests to these indexes, not to the real data. So you are getting the data, not in real time, but something which was previously indexed. Um, well, that's the first user. The second users are uh, different agencies who are providing uh, like search engine marketing activities. So imagine you are running a company, you are selling some goods, and you want to be highly ranked in the search result pages. What would you do? Well, probably you are going to hire someone who will uh, build uh, links to your website. But how would you measure the performance of your campaigns? How would you understand how things are ranked in the search results? And the scrapping uh, will be an answer in this case. So basically what would you do, you will scrap uh, the search uh, result pages, and then you will understand how highly you are ranked after some activities, and you will see changes. And just to wrap up with the, uh, with the commercial side of things, I would uh, mention e-commerce platforms like Amazon or eBay. Uh, those are giants, um, and basically, uh, Sometimes uh, it's not like uh, an advantage. Sometimes it's hard to uh, find some good products on Amazon because it's not suitable for uh, all the goods they are selling. It's quite hard to filter like specific TV screens in the website which offers like literally everything. So there are a lot of businesses who are uh, running the services which allows you to uh, get the data and find something out, especially find something out on multiple websites, like price comparison services and things like that. Uh, well, the next topic, the next user uh, is probably quite rarely used these days machine learning. Uh, yeah, no one uses this, this uh, approach these days. However, uh, in, in reality, if we will look on the machine learning, you will notice that this land has uh, a wide range of very good libraries. Uh, we were working with TensorFlow in the past, and uh, it is very easy to build a, a deeply layered uh, neural network with just a few lines of Python code. You can even get a pre-trained network, and then you can retrain it. And uh, guess what is the key success here, the key success factor here? It is the data. If you are capable for getting a good data, then your project will be successful. Then you will be able to solve your tasks and you will be able to, to kind of win the next round of investments, as simple as that. Um, the next users are different HR agencies. 
uh, well, every one of us is getting uh, job offers from time to time from all these uh, uh, HR, like freelance HR specialists. But have you uh, thought about how, how do they find us? How do they build profiles of, of, of us? And that's uh, also solved by web scrapping. Literally, you can extract the databases from websites like LinkedIn, and then you will have like a full list of developers in the given area. And uh, believe me or not, but uh, these kind of databases are extremely expensive and hard to maintain. And finally, I will cover a topic of political researches. Uh, there are some rumors that uh, back in 2016 uh, in United States election, the big data and uh, different uh, approaches for extracting data from social net networks was used and uh, brought a bit of success to one of the candidates. And uh, well, there is some background uh, which supports it. Basically, the data is already there and it's only about the efficiency. How, how do we use this data? How do we target the audience? If we are capable to extract the information about, uh, about the, uh, the influencers and how particularly do they influence people? How do they uh, approach the audience? And if they are uh, indeed uh, that efficient as, as they are saying. So that's probably the last most remarkable area of, of, of the usage. Now, as soon as we have defined the uh, main areas of usage, uh, we could also uh, speak about challenges a bit. Uh, so basically, uh, when, when we are talking about the challenges, uh, it, it is important to understand that uh, it is very easy to get started. It is very easy to just extract some pages and uh, like and to think that you are done. But imagine imagine different scalability scalability problems. For example, uh, do you know how many uh, pages uh, does Google uh, extract per day? Uh, do you know that back in 2016 their index size was a way beyond 100 pentabytes pentabytes of di data? What does it mean? It means that in order to extract this data or to update this data, you would have to kind of run a massively concurrent job. And it's not a trivial task. You would have to uh, push your hardware and software up to the limits in order to achieve that. The second challenge I would mention is the data extraction itself. Not every website is properly done and sometimes you have corrupted HTML. And the worst situation, uh, people are using JavaScript and uh, they are using JavaScript in order to, to render pages. And uh, uh, most of the frameworks, they are not addressing the JavaScript problems. They are just kind of ignoring this. Uh, they are saying, okay, you can, uh, you can get the data, but well, we will not mention that you will not be able to get the JavaScript data and it might be vital for you. Well, let's jump to another challenge, to another problem, politeness. You know, it's important to be polite. Uh, probably you wouldn't want to use uh, the scrapping engine as uh, another DDoS platform. Uh, well, unless you would want to rely on a side effect and uh, you know, side effects, they might include side effects in this case. And don't be surprised if your door will be knocked if you are going to be using the scrapping platform for these purposes. Uh, in general, it is important not only to have large amount of connections, but it's also important to be able to throttle requests to a given target on demand and to really understand how fast you are. Well, and finally, you have to be quite good at dealing with problems. Well, scrapping is done over the network and network has uh, like known connection issues. Sometimes you will not be able to get data. Sometimes you have to retry. Sometime, uh, sometimes uh, the target websites, they wouldn't want you to get the data. So they would try to ban your activities. And in these cases, you will uh, basically get uh, uh, captchas and you will have to solve them. 
And uh, alternatively, you will have to use proxies in order to overcome captures, or maybe to get the website from a different location. Who knows why would you need proxies, but in most of the cases, you will have to touch this area. Uh, now, as we have discussed the challenges, let's also discuss um, the uh, tool set. What is currently available on the market? Uh, who is using what in order to extract the data? Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I decided to touch uh, at least four different approaches. So first of all, it's possible to use uh, CURL and WGET. Uh, yeah, it looks like these two tools are around uh, for, uh, for forever already. They are very fast and reliable. Um, however, I would say that uh, it is hard to build something on the top of them. Uh, simply because they will not uh, allow you to be flexible enough, simply because they will not help you to extract the JavaScript. And uh, that's uh, challenges which I think are not beatable for, for these uh, tools, for these solutions. Uh, another approach is to use something very custom. And what, what I'm describing is Python with beautiful soap, a popular choice for people who are doing the data extraction. And it might be combined with different like browser-like things, which would allow you to render pages as they would look like to the end customers. I think this approach is nice and very interesting to hack. Uh, however, more you are hacking, more you are thinking that probably it's better if you have something already built for you. And if you can reuse some of the uh, knowledge which other people gained, when, when, when they have entered this battle of, of the data extraction. So not a go from my point of view. Let's jump to another option. Uh, as I have mentioned, I came from the Python world and in the past I was working with uh, the Scrappy uh, core team. And basically uh, we, we, we drank uh, not a one cup of tea together. So I know the insights and 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 different things about Scrappy. And I would assure you that it is a very mature framework capable for extracting millions of pages. And uh, it is very good choice. However, it was designed back in 2010. And uh, I think that nowadays it's possible to do it better. And that's why I want to introduce you uh, Kravli and I want to introduce you the idea of using Elixir for this particular job. Um, well, it looks like that Elixir is quite a new uh, tool, a new language uh, in this area. And if you will check on the web, it looks like that not a lot of people are using Elixir in order to perform web scrapping. Uh, my research shows that most of the time people are, are tending to use Python or Java or any other language. Uh, which um, is, let's say, uh, known as more mature. Uh, why I have decided to build something with Elixir? Uh, well, the motivation is the following. Elixir is a modern language uh, with lots of interesting features like uh, metaprogramming. And metaprogramming is very useful for the purposes of web scrapping. And I will cover this topic a bit later during this discussion. Um, another thing is that Elixir is extremely scalable. Uh, it is scalable uh, as a solution. So you can start with one node. You can seamlessly add as many nodes as you want. And everything works just out of the box. Uh, you will never have problems scaling up and down. And I think that's, that's amazing. Finally, I think that uh, Elixir has great ecosystem and probably I shouldn't really mention it here uh, among you. You know it better than me probably, but basically the ecosystem is amazing. You are not going to be alone. You will have a full chain of tool sets from web development to the hardware part and you will not be alone. You will have like lots of, lots of integration, integrational possibilities. Finally, it's built on the bulletproof technology based on Erlang which is known for being able to work on, uh, on very strange environments with uh, nothing, when nothing works and when, when lots of things are going, uh, going in the wrong direction. So basically it is fast and reliable. That's why I think that Elixir is a good choice 
And uh, um, I, I think that's very strange that no one was really kind of trying to scale it up with Elixir yet. Okay, so let's jump uh, to the to the Crowley itself. So I'm proud to present it here. Um, first of all, I would say that Crowley is free and open source uh, web framework. And yeah, guys, uh, you are welcome. Give it a try and uh, please help, help me hack it. I will be glad to, to get some feedback, to get some contribut uh, contributions. And I would be glad to see the successful projects built with this technology. I'm using Scrappy as a source of inspiration. I think it's a wise idea. It's always good to take something as an example. It's always good to, um, to know someone's mistakes and uh, to use someone, someone's insights to build something better. It is full of features. Um, it will do a lot of things just out of the box. It will obey robots.txt by default. It will filter out duplicated items and requests. It will validate items according to the given definitions. It can calculate unique identifiers. It can mongle requests, for example, so you will get different user agents or different headers depending on your needs. Uh, finally, one of the interesting topics is uh, the uni unity, the unification of things. Uh, well, sometimes if you are using some very custom approach, uh, what you will discover in your code base is that every spider is unique. Every spider is built around different architecture. And in this case, it's extremely hard to maintain this code base. The idea of Crowley is to, um, is to decouple the problem of uh, spider writing and uh, decouple it from the uh, networking, for example. So things are more simple at the end of the day. And finally, it's very simple and it's easy to get started with it. Uh, why it happens? Well, mostly because we treat documentation very seriously. Uh, we think that uh, nothing can survive without very good and compiling documentation. We have uh, a very good documentation with lots of examples, uh, getting started guide, a possibility for you to write something within minutes and to get data just straight away. And just read it, uh, you, will, uh, you will literally like it, I think. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, during the, uh, this tutorial, I'm going to showcase uh, how, how simple it is to, uh, to, to build uh, a spider with Crowley. So let's get started. Uh, let's get started, let's uh, jump to the technical side of the, of the conversation. Um, so how do we, how do we start? As usually, uh, we are starting the new project uh, with the mix new command. Uh, yeah, I have called it example. Then you need to add Crowley to the list of dependencies. Again, it is always good to use the latest version. And uh, here I have also added Floki as a dependency. Uh, Crowley itself doesn't make any, uh, any guesses about how the data is going to be extracted. At the end of the day, it's up to you. And uh, I had quite a good experience extracting data with the help of MISIX, uh, for example, library. Uh, otherwise, Floki is a good for demonstration purposes because it doesn't require you to install Rust, for example. Okay, so finally, once we have uh, made the initial bootstrap, uh, let's move forward and uh, let's see how, how to define things, how to define the, the rules. Uh, so basically, uh, what, is, uh, what is a spider? Why, why do we call things spiders here? Uh, well, this, um, this term goes from the, uh, from the scrappy world. And uh, in general, I think that it's a good analogy. So in the real life, there are spiders who are sitting on the web, who are jumping from one side of the web to another side of the web, and who are um, getting something, uh, some small other insects. And I think that um, it is a valid analogy here as well, because at the end of the day, uh, what we are building is something which jumps from one link to another and just extracts something from that link. So why don't we call it a spider, especially if it's a term which is used otherwise as well in other libraries. Uh, so it makes sense. But what does it mean from the point of view of, uh, of, of, of the Crowley? Well, from the point of view of the Crowley, uh, a spider is a behavior 
which requires you to implement three callbacks. The init function, which defines how to start the crawling. The base URL, which defines how to restrict your, your crawling within a given domain. And basically the parse item uh, callback, which is required to understand how to, how to move forward which new requests to, to build out of the given page and which items to extract. So as soon as you have defined these three callbacks, everything is done and you are okay to move forward. In this example, I'm showing you how, how simple it is to implement things uh, this way. So here I'm showing you a small example of uh, a spider which extracts data from the Erlang Solutions uh, blog. Uh, you can see that the actual part, the one which extracts the data is just about maybe eight lines of code. Uh, and uh, well, you can get the data this way and the data will, will, will be just at your pocket. And, and then you can use it in, in a different way. For example, you can uh, build a clone of our site. I'm sure our marketing team will like it. Or maybe not. Uh, let's move forward. So once uh, you have defined uh, the thing, the spider, uh, you have to configure the crawl itself. Um, as you know, every uh, application needs some sort of configuration. We have built Crawly uh, with the idea that uh, it should be configured in a very simple way. So in, in, in this particular case, uh, you can think of Crawly as of a pipeline. You are just having a huge pipe of, of things and you are pushing requests to the pipe and they are being processed with the given middlewares one after another. For example, this middleware filters uh, the pages and removes things from which are going outside of the given domain. Then you are removing uh, pages which were already visited in the past. Then you are rotating requests. And similar uh, things, they happen to the items as well. Uh, so once you have defined the configuration, once you have defined the spider itself, uh, it's possible to extract the data. Uh, it is as simple as just running one command, start spider with a spider name. And uh, here in this uh, small uh, presentation, I am showing how, how it looks like and how to, how to get the data. So basically, just just follow it. I, I wonder if you can see it properly, or shall I make it larger, Michael? Uh, so it's not easy to see the details of, of this presentation. I, I, I can try to enlarge it. Uh, yeah, sorry, it just jumps. Yeah, uh, so basically it showcases that uh, once, once you are running this command, you are getting the data back. Uh, so to summarize, you just saw an example how, how easily you can build, um, build a system, how easily you can extract the data. But imagine that you are another, uh, another agency which converts data to money. So for example, if you are providing the data to your clients, uh, you need to have some, uh, some sort of uh, level of the service. In order to achieve that level, you have to uh, make data extraction a business process. And how to do that? It's not possible to do it with just a common line tool because what you really need, you need to involve different departments. You need to have developers who will develop the data extractors. You need to have, uh, for example, quality assurance engineers who are capable for validating the data. And uh, Crowley has an answer to that concern. We have built a user interface dashboard, which allows you, for example, to schedule the spider and to see how uh, the data looks like at the end of the day. So for example, this page allows you to schedule a spider uh, in a distributed manner. So you can schedule a spider on a node which is located somewhere and you will get the data to the centralized storage. Uh, you can then navigate the given job. You can see how it looks like from the point of view of overall. Uh, like layout, you can narrow it down with some searches. You can find out products which are uh, less than, for example, given price. And then you can probably build some, uh, some quality assurance processes based on that. And finally, you can compare the scrap data with the actual page on, on the website. In this example, I'm showing you how 
um, how the data looks like uh, from the Amazon uh, comedies uh, section. And yeah, indeed, it uh, looks like that we have done a good job and we have extracted uh, it properly. However, at the end of the day, you might also notice that some parts are missing here and that's good. You are just seeing that something is missing. Probably the job which developers were doing is not accurate enough. So you need to reiterate and you need to improve the data. That's the whole purpose for, for the UI. That's the whole purpose of making this a process. Okay, so uh, it's time to wrap up. Uh, let me make a short summary about the Crawly itself. I think Crawly is a good tool uh, which could help you to organize your own business on the top of the data. Uh, it has a lot of built-in features like, uh, like throttling, unified system of item extractors, automatic cookies management, browser rendering support. It will uh, support proxies and retries. And finally, we have the management user interface. So guys, please give it a try and maybe try to build something with the help of it. I will be glad if you will succeed. Uh, if you can, uh, and if you will find it interesting, please join us in the team of contributors. And finally, thanks for listening to this presentation. And now it's time for a Q&A session. Michael, do we have a bit of time for questions and answers or? Uh, yes, excellent presentation. Thanks, very insightful, very useful. Thanks, Oleg. Uh, actually, while you were presenting, some of the questions that were posted were already addressed. Uh, so very good content. Now, uh, we have a couple more. Uh, let me read one out. Is there a way to get notified when particular page is updated and crawl only the updated part? Yeah, basically that's one of the concerns. People are building something like uh, crawl monitoring solutions and uh, they, they would just kind of visit given pages uh, when, when, when it's time. Currently, Crawly doesn't have it built in, but it's possible to build crawlers for these purposes with the minor modifications. Okay, thank you. Another one, what was this other extraction library you talked about uh, as an alternative to Floki? Uh, yeah, it's Mi6, I think, uh, yeah. I, I, I can kind of type the name in the uh, in the box because probably my pronunciation is not as good as uh, you would expect. Sorry, guys. Right. So you can maybe address this question in writing later yeah, in Hoover. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, I have another one. If I would like to just uh, sort of uh, get a static version of certain page, uh, would you recommend using uh, Crowley for this, or would you rather use some other uh, tools which are ready? Yeah, as I have mentioned, it's up to you. Uh, everything depends on, on the problems you are trying to solve. If it's one time job and if it's just about one page, you can pretty much use whatever you want. If it's about building a business, if it's about extracting millions of pages, like in the case of Google or Amazon, then you need something, like really need something. 